This workshop is focused on the duties of a secretary and recording minutes of a meeting. There are lots of details as we explore the importance of this position, so grab something to take notes on and be sure to let your council leaders or your field service representative know if you have questions after you've watched this. The Secretary Basics course will help you understand the importance of the position of secretary from a legal and practical perspective. The duties and responsibilities will be reviewed in detail, as well as the available resources and the materials and supplies that you will need to successfully perform this position. You will learn about motions and types of votes and how to record them accurately in the minutes. The format of the minutes and the various approval processes will be presented. Armed with the information provided in this course, Along with some helpful hints, you will feel confident that you are maintaining relevant and accurate records of your PTA's business. PTA has remained focused on our vision and mission for over 100 years. This is our dream for every child, that every child's potential is a reality. The mission explains how we will accomplish our collective vision. That mission is to make every child's potential a reality by engaging and empowering families and communities to advocate for all children. These are words every student, parent, teacher, and community member should be able to support. The common bond among all PTAs can be found in our purposes. These PTA purposes help guide us in our work at all levels of the association. Your programs and activities should always be aligned with these purposes. As a national and statewide organization, PTA values collaboration, commitment, diversity, respect, and accountability. PTA observes the national standards for family school partnerships, and all PTAs should be welcoming all families into the school community, communicating effectively, supporting student success, speaking up for every child, sharing power, and collaborating with the community. Implementing these six standards will foster positive family engagement at your campus. Texas PTA has had a cultural diversity and inclusion policy since July of 2012. However, in an effort to stay in alignment with the recently updated national PTA policy, the Texas PTA Board of Directors assigned a task force to update that existing policy. The task force produced and the Board of Directors approved the policy that is partially shown on the screen in April of 2021. To see the full policy and to find some helpful resources from National PTA and Texas PTA, please go to txpta.org forward slash DEI dash TASK dash FORCE. The duties of local PTA executive board members are also listed in your local PTA bylaws. Foundations, essentials, and basics are the only training that Texas PTA requires every executive board member to take. Foundations Essentials is an introductory course for new PTA leaders that all officers and committee chairs must take at least one time in their PTA career. The course is offered online for a fee that is reimbursable by your PTA. The Basics series is a position-specific training and is required to be taken every time you are elected or appointed to a new role. Completion of this orientation ensures that all PTA leaders have the same base knowledge of PTA background, policies, and procedures. It is important that all PTA leaders complete the training as soon as possible, ideally within 30 days of election or appointment as described in the bylaws. Each officer and chair completes a written plan of work. These plans of work are presented to and approved by the executive board prior to the first membership meeting in the fall and are used for budgetary planning and overall goal setting. A plan of work lets executive board members know what each executive board member plans for the year so conflicts can be avoided and connections can be made to work together on common purposes. Bylaws provide the essential information for running your PTA. Read them thoroughly and become familiar with them. You must follow the bylaws at all times. 
Your PTA may also have standing rules, which include the more procedural aspect of your PTA. Standing rules cannot conflict with or duplicate your bylaws. All members of the executive board are expected to attend all meetings of both the executive board and the association. Even if an executive board member does not have a report to give at a meeting, they still have a responsibility as a member of the executive board to participate in the accountability and decision-making process. The Confidentiality, Ethics, and Conflict of Interest Agreement is signed and adopted by the executive board each new term. All executive board members must sign this policy per the bylaws. The policy clearly defines the duties and responsibilities of all executive board members to conduct the business of the PTA in a responsible manner without conflicts of interest. Each executive board member has a responsibility to be aware of the current activities of the PTA and to ensure all records are accurate. The secretary and treasurer depend on fellow executive board members to assist them in their roles by reading and correcting the reports. It is every executive board member's responsibility to recruit members. Your PTA serves as the front door to our association. You should seek out families in your school and community to encourage them to join and make a difference in a child's life. Your first duty in your PTA position is to recruit your replacement. The sustainability of your PTA is dependent on the strength of its leadership. History is written by people who attend meetings and stay until the end and keep the minutes. Never say, I'm just the secretary. The job of the secretary is very important to any association. You are responsible for keeping accurate records of the proceedings of the association. The president and secretary are the only required corporate officers in the state of Texas. And the records you create are your PTA's history. Minutes are a legal document. They are just as critical to financial review as monetary reports. The duties of the secretary can be found in the bylaws, and we'll go into a bit more detail here on what each duty details. Additional information regarding all of the secretarial duties can be found in the full secretary resource guide. Record the minutes of all meetings of the association. This includes minutes from both the executive board and association meetings in notebooks that you have for that purpose. Destroy your notes after the minutes have been approved. Send or cause to be sent notice of meetings of the members and of the executive board. Typically, the president does this, but they could ask the secretary to perform this duty. Be responsible for correspondence. Compose letters by the direction of the executive board or the president and read correspondence received to the board or the membership. Collect and preserve documents relating to the history of the association. If you have a historian, they would perform this duty, but otherwise the secretary maintains these documents. Present a written report to the association as the official history to be adopted at the annual meeting. Again, if you have a historian, they would do this. This is simply a summary of the meetings, events, and activities of the PTA over the school year. Have a current copy of the bylaws. The template is often updated by National or Texas PTA, so it is advised to request a copy each fall at the beginning of the school year to ensure you have the latest version. Confirm the executive board has reviewed and the membership has adopted the Texas PTA PTSA records retention policy annually. A blank copy is in the secretary resource guide and the filled in adopted policy is kept in the secretary's permanent records. Confirm that all executive board members have signed the local PTA confidentiality, ethics, and conflict of interest policy. Secretary maintains the original copy. Confirm that all executive board members are graduates of Texas PTA Essentials and appropriate basics courses within 30 days of their election or appointment. Maintain information in a spreadsheet to pass on to your successor. File with the Council PTA Secretary the names of this local PTA's delegates and alternates by the first regular Council Delegate meeting. Only those delegates that are on record with the Council Secretary will be granted voting privileges. 
At any point that a change needs to be made, do so in writing prior to the next council delegate meeting. Present the statement review by non-signer reports at each executive board meeting. Each month's report should be submitted to the secretary upon completion by the non-signer and presented at the next executive board meeting. The secretary is responsible for passing the report on to the treasurer after having received it. Ensure all board members submit their names and contact information to the Texas PTA office within 15 days of their election or appointment. Maintain the required documents of the association and not be a member of the Financial Reconciliation Committee. Maintain an inventory of the PTA's property or assets. This could include a popcorn machine, t-shirts, pencils, carnival games. Keep a file of all committee reports. Keep copies of all paperwork distributed at all meetings. Keep organized for e easy reference. Give a report of the executive board. Determine if the secretary or another officer, oftentimes the president, gives the report of the executive board meetings. Never read the executive board minutes to the membership. The report from the executive board contains its actions and recommendations. When recommendations are contained in the report, the person giving the report moves the adoption of each recommendation. May vote, file motions, nominate candidates. Secretary has a full voice. Arrive early for a seat near the president. Sitting by the president enables you to clarify, receive paperwork, arrive early to ensure your spot. Keep the minutes record book up to date and signed. All minutes must be signed by the person creating them. Call the meeting to order if the president and vice presidents are absent and preside until the assembly elects a temporary chair. If you must preside, it should only be for as short a time as possible. And always appoint someone else to take the minutes during that time. Confirm quorum, count a rising vote, and have ballots available. Quorum must be established to conduct business and must be noted in the minutes. A rising vote typically would occur if a voice vote was not clearly in favor or against. It should be counted with volunteers, have at least two people counting so all votes can be verified. May request through the chair that motions be in writing. A sample motion form is in the secretary resource guide and could be copied and kept on hand. Its important motions are recorded word for word. More details on motions later. Some resources that are available to you are the Texas PTA resource guides. President and parliamentarian are also useful as a secretary. The basic secretary resource guide. The Texas PTA website at www.txpta.org and resource guides can be found at txpta.org forward slash support. Past minutes of your PTA. This is helpful to give you a history of past events and agendas and the style of the minutes for your PTA, as well as typical business conducted each month. Robert's Rules of Order, newly revised, can help with parliamentary procedures governing meetings. This information is also helpful when drafting the minutes. Consult with counsel or Texas PTA secretary, as well as your field service representative. National PTA at pta.org offers extensive e-learning courses. Each officer and chair should present a plan of work to the executive board for approval. A plan of work helps keep everyone focused and on track. The sample plan of work for secretary can be found in the Texas PTA Secretary Resource Guide. Some suggested supplies are copies of the agenda, approved minutes in a binder with numbered pages. Two sets of minutes should be kept, one for executive board and one for membership meetings. At the end of the fiscal year, have the minutes bound by a print shop. Although the secretary may keep many documents on file, only the permanent legal records need to be bound. Minutes, <clears throat> reports referred to in the minutes, annual report, all are helpful. Refer to the records retention policy and include those documents which must be kept permanently and are associated with the minutes. 
you want to ensure the records are not tampered with, so if the pages are numbered and securely bound, they will be safe. Once the minutes are approved, corrections should be made by hand. Details on approving and correcting minutes will be covered later in the presentation. All the treasurer's reports, including budgets and amendments, all committee reports, supplies for a ballot vote, colored index cards, or some type of small pieces of paper should be kept available to use for ballots in case the parliamentarian does not have them, and adequate writing instruments or a notebook. All executive board members keep a procedure book, either in print or electronically, which contains all the materials important to the work of their office or their committee. This procedure book is passed on to one's successor or the president within 15 days of the successor assuming the position. Your procedure book should include a copy of your bylaws and standing rules. Current roster of your executive board member and committee members and all items related to your position. Also, meeting documents of both the executive board and your committee. Every single board member should be knowledgeable on the financial responsibilities of the PTA. Below is basic information on the finances that every board member needs to be aware of. There is so much more involved in the everyday financial management of a PTA. These are just the basics. For more detailed information, see www.txpta.org slash treasurer. The Internal Revenue Service, or the IRS, as included on the Form 990, requires reporting by nonprofits on a range of governance issues that reach far beyond financial reporting, including board member fiduciary duty. This means executive board members have three fundamental fiduciary duties a duty of care, a duty of loyalty, and a duty of obedience. The duty of care means that you as a board member actively participate, attend board meetings, educate yourself on the industry, provide strategic direction, and oversee the day-to-day -day operations of the PTA. The duty of loyalty requires you as a board member to operate in the interest of your local PTA and not to use your position to further personal agenda. The duty of obedience requires the board to know the state and federal laws and regulations that apply. This includes the regulations and guidance issued by the IRS. Obedience to governing documents requires a deep understanding of the operating documents, your bylaws, your rules, your board manuals. And finally, obedience requires that you as a board member and a board not act outside the scope of the organization's legal documents. Fiduciary responsibility in a PTA means the executive board members act as trustees of the organization's assets and must exercise due diligence to oversee that the organization is well managed and that its financial situation remains sound. The executive board verifies that all filing requirements and tax obligations are completed. Some of the budget basics are creating a framework for program management and overall administrative decisions. An approved budget must be in place at all times in order for expenditures to be made and fundraisers to be conducted. The budget is presented and adopted by the membership at the last membership meeting of the year and is amended at the first membership meeting based on approved plans of work submitted by the new executive board members. The members always approve expenses and income via the budget, which can be amended as needed. To keep people informed, a current financial report is presented at every regular executive board and membership meeting. As the funds belong to the members, they have the right to access the financial reports presented at membership meetings. Payments are never made in cash and blank checks should never be issued. All payments must relate to an approved budget item and have a reimbursement from the receipt and a bill attached. No other organization may pass its money through the PTA account in an effort to achieve tax-exempt status, and money can never be turned over to the school and or principal to spend at their discretion. All monies collected are turned over to the treasurer as soon as possible. Money is counted by at least two people at the same time, and both the counters and the treasurer each sign and keep a copy of the completed Texas PTA deposit form 
The treasurer may be one of the two counters. It is in the PTA's best interest to cover the treasurer and all other persons authorized to handle money with a fidelity bond and offers liability to cover losses through any fraudulent or dishonest act. Insurance premiums are budgeted as an expense line. If you need more details on financial procedures for your PTA, please visit txpta.org forward slash treasurer. Texas PTA's membership year begins on August 1st, and membership recruitment should be occurring year round. You can find all of our membership awards on our website. Local PTAs must meet the following requirements each year to obtain active status with Texas PTA. Number one, remit to Texas PTA state and national membership dues for at least 20 members. Number two, submit to Texas PTA the name and contact information, which includes mailing address, phone number, and email of at least one current executive board member, preferably the president. Local PTAs must comply with all of the following standards to remain in good standing with Texas PTA. Maintaining active status, as we mentioned above, with Texas PTA. Report all members and remit all state and national dues to Texas PTA each year. Submit to Texas PTA the name and contact information for each executive board member within 15 days of election or appointment. Each executive board should submit their own contact information through the Submit Board Info link on our website homepage. Review your bylaws and standing rules every three years and submit to Texas PTA for approval. And each year within 60 days of the fiscal year end, electronically file and have accepted by the IRS the Form 990 Return of Organization Exempt from Income Tax. This is sooner than the required date by the IRS. The outgoing treasurer should file the 990 as soon as the fiscal year end as possible. Minutes are a legal document recording what action was taken, not what was said. Minutes should never reflect the opinion of the secretary or any member, favorable or otherwise, on anything said or done. The secretary is not expected to summarize the discussion of others. Report briefly in the order that business occurred. Minutes are taken to protect the organization and the members who participated in the meeting. Minutes should be kept as brief as possible and should only reflect actions taken at the meeting. What are motions? Proposals the PTA must consider are offered in the form of a motion and require the group to do something. A motion begins with I move and then the proposal. Begin your writing so-and-so moved to. A second is required to begin discussion on the action proposed unless it comes from committee or the board. The presiding officer repeats and conducts the vote. This slide is to review the purpose and process of a motion. How to record it is in the next slide. Begin a new paragraph for each motion along with the name of the maker. For a second, the name of the person who moved the action must be in the minutes. The name of the person seconding the motion is not required unless requested by participants at the meeting, although it must be indicated that a second was made. Record the method and outcome of the vote. You'll record the type of vote, majority or two thirds, voice vote, ballot vote, and the outcome, pass or fail of the motion. Types of votes are outlined in the next slide. Personal opinions and details of debate or discussion are not included. Amendments approved. When an amendment fails to pass, the amendment is not recorded. Previous notice given if appropriate. This would apply to special meetings called or a bylaw approval meeting. Number of votes cast if counted or by ballot. When a vote is by ballot, record the total votes cast, number of votes for or against, and number of illegal votes. When a counted vote is taken, record the totals for and against. Votes taken include voice, which is used for most votes, a verbal response in favor or against. Ballot is a written response in favor or against or to elect. 
there can be a motion to destroy ballots afterwards. Some other methods of voting, um, the executive board emergency only by phone or email. In an emergency situation, the executive board may vote by phone, email, or other electronic means if authorized by the president. Members have at least 24 hours to cast their votes and a two thirds vote of the entire executive board is required for adoption. And the vote shall be recorded in the minutes of the next regular meeting of the executive board. There are three methods to approve the minutes. You can stand and read the minutes out loud. Corrections can be noted. And if there are no corrections, the presiding officer may say, hearing no corrections, the minutes are approved as read. And this is called general consent. They can be distributed for review as long as a copy with draft is marked on each page and given only to members. If people take the minutes home, they know there may have been corrections. The copy for the record book does not need draft written on it as it will be corrected by hand. A committee of three can be appointed by the president during the meeting. The president may appoint a committee of three if preferred to approve the minutes. If the minutes are reviewed by a committee, each member signs and dates the minutes after reading and making necessary corrections. Minutes approved by committee are not presented for approval. The president simply states the minutes of the insert date meeting were approved by a committee consisting of and then lists the names of those on the committee. If someone wishes to correct those minutes, they may, but the president does not ask for corrections. After the minutes have been approved, the secretary writes approved as read or printed or approved as corrected, and the date of the approval and the secretary's signature. Mm -hmm. Minutes are approved by the body that created them. That means executive board minutes are available only to the executive board, while regular meeting minutes are available to the entire membership. Do not publish these in newsletters or post on doors, and unless you have a password protected website, please do not post them there. Minutes of a regular meeting cannot be approved at a special meeting. Depending on whether their minutes are distributed or read, corrections may be handled in various ways. The number of corrections during the meeting can be minimized if the minutes are sent to the board or the committee to review in advance. Corrections can then be sent directly to the secretary prior to the meeting. The draft presented at the meeting is the version that is approved as presented, printed, or corrected. If minutes are not available for approval at a meeting, then those minutes are approved at the next meeting. Minutes should be approved in the order that the meetings occurred, oldest ones first. Correct in red ink on the record book copy once they have been presented. If an error is noticed after the minutes have been approved, a two thirds vote is required for change. And they are signed and dated by the secretary and the committee members if used. This outline pertains to a typical association or membership meeting agenda. Executive board meetings follow a similar format, most likely without ceremonial items at the beginning like the pledge, and no report of the executive board or a program topic. Things like calling the meeting to order, invocation, quorum established, minutes, treasurer's report, reading of communications, executive board reports, unfinished business, new business, time of adjournment. Each section of the minutes should be a separate section. In section one, you will include the following. The type of meeting, regular, special, or adjourned. A regular meeting is a meeting that is listed in your bylaws as one of your membership meetings. A special meeting is a meeting that has had to be called to address a specific topic between your regular meetings. Only the specific topic will be addressed, no other business. This could include things like a budget amendment. An adjourned meeting is a meeting that is in continuation of the preceding meeting. It has a scheduled date and time. You will also include the name of the organization, such as Terrific PTA Executive Board or Terrific PTA Membership Meeting. You'll include the date, time, and the place of the meeting, and you'll record if a quorum was established. Names or numbers of members present is usually possible for executive board or committee me meetings with 20 or less members. Sign-in sheets for regular meetings may also be attached to the minutes to show members present. 
You'll include the fact that the regular presiding officer and secretary were present, or, in their absence, the names of the persons who substituted for them. And you'll also include how the minutes of the previous meeting were approved, as read, distributed, or by committee. As a reminder, should the minutes not be available for approval, then those minutes are approved first at the next meeting. Minutes should be approved in the order that the meetings occurred. Section 2, or the second paragraph, includes the treasurer's report, and that should contain the beginning balance, total receipts since your last meeting, total disbursements since the last meeting, and the ending balance. These are the legal records and this information must be in the minutes and the reports attached to the minutes. You don't need line by line information, but these four numbers specifically. Section three or paragraph three includes communications. This would be any cards or letters that the PTA has received since the last meeting. Section four or paragraph four includes report of the executive board. The secretary gives a report of the executive board at membership meetings which is a summary of actions taken. If there are motions from the board for the association's consideration, the secretary presents those the following way. On behalf of the board of directors, I move to or that, and then states the motion. It also includes the report of officers and committees. Officers and committee chairs make reports as appropriate. Remember, if a report demands action of the membership, then the person giving that report should make the motion in the form of a recommendation from that committee. No second is needed if a motion comes from a committee. The treasurer's report may be presented here with other officer reports. Section five or paragraph five is unfinished business. Business from a previous meeting that was not resolved at that meeting. Usually it's an item that was sent to a committee to research further and report back. Sometimes it's business that was not addressed or completed because of a lack of time. The item will not be on the agenda unless the chair and the secretary know of any unfinished business based on the previous minutes. New business is any business brought before the members at that meeting. It's business that has not been brought forward from a previous meeting, for example, a nominating committee report. The chair will always ask if there is new business as any member may bring an item to the association or board. It's a good idea for board meetings that the president request business items from the board prior to creating the agenda. Section six or paragraph six, the program topic. List who presented the program and what the topic was. No details are necessary, but do this prior to adjourning. If the presiding officer is concerned about forgetting or losing people at the end, they may say following the program, the meeting will be adjourned. If this is not recorded in the minutes prior to adjournment, there will be no record of the PTA hosting the program. Section seven or paragraph seven, the time of adjournment. No motion is necessary to adjourn. Um, follow by the signatures of the secretary and the names and signatures of the reviewers if this is by committee. After the minutes have been approved, the secretary writes, approved as read or printed, or approved as corrected, the date of approval, and then sign it. If the minutes are reviewed by a committee, each member will sign and date the minutes after reading and making necessary corrections. The minutes approved by committee are not presented for approval. The president will simply state the minutes of the, insert your date here, meeting, were approved by a committee consisting of, and then list the names of that committee. If someone wishes to correct those minutes, they may, but the president does not ask for corrections. It's a good idea to have a few copies of the approved minutes for members who would like a copy. You may keep a copy of the minutes on your computer to transfer to a CD to give to your successor and as a backup in case of the loss of required hard copies. Here are some helpful hints. Ask your president for a copy of the agenda before the meeting. This can be your template for taking notes by adding spaces between each agenda item. Create a saved template on the computer for minutes. If you are not present at a meeting, the president should appoint a secretary pro tem. If this happens, the substitute drafts the minutes and gives them to the secretary as the keeper of official documents. The minutes are approved as usual. Let the president know in advance if possible so that preparations can be made. 
Send the minutes from the previous meeting to be presented and approved even if you are unable to attend. Complete the minutes as soon as possible after the meeting, ideally within three to five days. After that, your memory and your ability to read your writing will begin to fade and the job will be increasingly difficult. Release the minutes only after consulting with the president. It's the president's job to authorize the distribution of the minutes. For the board, it's advisable to send them out as soon as possible after the meeting because their memory fades also and that makes corrections more difficult. Special rules apply when recording. You may tape the meeting, but here are some considerations. Many times technical issues happen with recording. Recording requires 100% consent of participants. It often inhibits discussion and the disposal of the recording and its possible use in lawsuits if there is no policy on disposition of recordings. Texas PTA staff and volunteer leaders are here to answer any of your questions regarding your position. Our toll-free number is 1-800-TALK-PTA or email us directly. Thank you for your time and attention. I hope that this training has been beneficial and it will make your work in PTA easier and more enjoyable. If you have any questions in the future, please know that your field service representative and council leaders are always ready to help.